You want to see a magic trick? I'm going to make this noise disappear in three, two, one, boom. What's up guys, my name is Kazi and in this video, we're going to try Resolve's 19's latest AI-based noise reduction. We'll compare it on multiple different shots to see if it's any good. I will then compare it to Resolve's traditional NR, how I professionally use it. And finally, I'm gonna compare it to my all-time favorite third-party plugin that came out a decade ago. And after watching this video, you will know the best way to apply noise reduction to your footage to get professional looking grades. Speaking of high-end grades, how epic would it be to get top tier commercial looks in minutes? By using Kazi's toolkit, I created this look from scratch in under 45 seconds. So join the waitlist to get early access plus 20% off. Link is in the description. Let's roll the intro. So here are the two clips that we're going to be working with. Both are beautiful in their own way, but very challenging, especially this one is going to be a lot more challenging than the first one, but we're going to start with this guy. The footage is going to be available for you to download if you want to practice along. Link is going to be in the description. And it is courtesy of my homie, Michael Tobin. If it weren't for him, I wouldn't be able to give you access to this footage. Thank you, brother. I'm gonna have links to his channels right here. You should definitely check them out. So first, let's look at what Blackmagic has to say about this tool. Ultra NR is an AI-based noise reduction option that provides intelligently targeted noise reduction based on the machine learning of real-world video noise patterns. It's designed to give an optimum balance between the wanted reduction of noise and the unwanted softening of the picture. Big words, sounds amazing, Everything that I'm reading here makes it sound like this is gonna be a billion times better than what we had before. So the only way to find out is right here. By the way, I've included the link to Resolve 19's user guide if you just wanna learn more about the new features. First image was shot on DJI 4D. So it is converted from log to Rec. 709 and we're gonna be working in this node right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click right here. Most of the time when you're applying noise reduction in Resolve, you go under motion effects and you use these parameters right here. But a pro tip is this, because majority of the people watching this content probably don't have a dedicated reference monitor. And if that's the case with noise reduction, you really have to punch in and see what's going on. But not everybody is going to be looking at a 55 inch screen, right? A lot of people are gonna be watching it or using Resolve on a 13, 16 inch laptop. So then your actual viewing area is probably like seven to 11 inches, right? So suggestion that I have for you, instead of using noise reduction in this panel right here, just type in noise reduction and use it as a no effects. The parameters are identical. So you're not missing out on anything. Now, if I make it full screen, I will have this on the side. So now I can work with full screen area instead of this little screen right here. Okay, so that's just a quick little pro hack for you. Now the Ultra NR lives inside Spatial NR. So if you click right here under modes, you can go all the way down here. That's a brand new mode. Okay, so that is their AI based noise reduction. So let's go ahead and click on Ultra NR. First, when you do that, nothing happens. Why is that? Because we have to let AI activate and do its thing. So as soon as I click on analyze, boom, look at this now. So it goes and finds a flat surface where there's not a big shift that's happening when it comes to tonal ranges or color shifts, and then it builds a profile based on that, okay? So if I punch in and get really close, and I do before and after, at first glance, this is doing a wonderful job. It is insane. It's a really good job. I mean, look at this. It's cleaning it up. Now, if you're noticing this, I gotta tell you, this thing, like, this thing is power hungry. It is really, really insane. So if I do a playback, just look at right here. I mean, this thing chokes, guys. It gets crazy. Like six to seven frames on M2 Ultra souped up. That's insane. That's shocking. But the results are really good, right? Now, they say that, you know, Resolve says that, hey, if you're not satisfied with the results, you can basically click here and move it around and find your own point. So some people are going to be like, oh, yeah, I do everything manually. Good for you. But that defeats the purpose when it comes to using AI. I mean, let AI do its thing. That's the whole idea behind this tool or else you shouldn't even be using it in the first place. So you have to trust AI. And even if I grab it from here and patch it right here, 
like this is doing too much of the color shift, right? Compared to like what AI was doing. So it was already giving me a much better result. Now, I am not a big fan of like how much color shift we're noticing. And then also there is a significant amount of softening that's happening, okay? So like if I go really close, like I see that, right? So then what is my solution to that? So in this particular example, I would recommend doing this. Go to Luma channel and kill it. Just double click right here. And then as soon as you do that, it will basically remove all the noise. It was noise reduction. It was applying to the Luma channel and it will only affect the Chroma channel. And most of the time with digital signal, it is the gunky RGB noise that we want to get rid of, not necessarily the monochromatic grain. That actually looks really film-like and nice. And I think this to me looks like an image from Alexa minus the little bit of compression that we're seeing here that you won't see in Alexa. But my point is that this looks pretty clean. It still feels and looks like it was done in like low light and it is a little bit underexposed and that's how even an Alexa image will look like. But to me, this looks way better than if I were to undo it and we get this. This is just a bit too much. So if I go here, let's just say this is also too much. Let's split the difference. So if I go here and this is 0 0.037, and then this is 0, 0, 0. How about if we just do 0 0.018? Like split the difference right in the middle. Now, if I do before and after, we're not sacrificing the sharpening as much, right? So like this to me is a pretty happy medium. I'm also happy with actually just killing it completely. So now I don't lose the sharpening at all in my image and I just get rid of all this gunk, like all this mush. All of that is gone. But again, if you just want to do uh, 0 0.018, there's nothing wrong with it, do it. And then that's what we end up with. So that will be the first example. And as we saw, it chokes between six to seven frames. Now let's move on to our second example, which as I mentioned, spoiler alert, is going to be a lot harder. So let's just go ahead and drop our noise reduction right here. And as soon as I do that, obviously nothing is happening until we apply noise reduction. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing, special NR, ultra NR, and then let it decide. So hit analyze and it grabs a patch from a flat surface. And it did something before, after. Wow. That's not that good, huh? That's not good at all. I, I don't know. I just expected a lot more. So what if we just crank it? What if like, so right now, right now it's set to this. Like, what if I just go nuts? it doesn't really make a big difference. So this is before, this is after. What if we just do the same thing with Luma? I mean, it kind of does make a difference on Luma, but even then, right? Like for how much we're pushing it, like before and after, before and after, and then it's not really getting in there. Like this footage was really challenging. And Tobin told me too, he was like, dude, I would be very interested to see like how a professional would approach removing noise from something where the, noise is just sitting in the bones, right? Like it's just embedded. It's almost like it's part of the look. It's embedded so hard. So I'm very, very sad to say that uh, the Ultra NR pooped. It's not doing anything. So let's go back to my traditional. You know what I'm going to do is this. Let's go to Ultra NR. Let's apply it. And now let's create a new version. And in this one, I'm going to reset this. And then I'm going to apply noise reduction how I usually do it when I am using Resolve Native NR. So I'm going to go ahead and click right here. I'm going to change that to better. And then I'm going to go to my temporal threshold and I'm going to crank it to 23, 24 ish. I don't go past that. And now when I do that, and if I zoom in, I mean, come on. So now this is the traditional noise reduction. And then this is ultra NR or AI based. Mine is looking better already than this, but the problem is look at what's happening with mine, what's happening with the hair. So temporal NR is based on the motion that is taking place in your image. So basically you want to apply noise reduction to everything but the areas that are moving. So right now it is actually compensating and applying noise reduction to areas that are that have somewhat movement. So let's kill that. So I would bring that down to about 25-ish. And that's when it kind of just like leaves this alone. It's still moving it a little bit, but not too much. Like that I can live with. And if I come in close, like it's not doing a bad job. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go here. I'm going to change the spatial NR to enhanced. And I'm going to also crank this to about 22-ish. 
So now if I do before and after, now I got to tell you, these results compared to ultra NR are better. So if I move right here and show you this, this is ultra NR AI based. And then this is our tried and tested old school. Now, some people will be turned off by the little movement that gets added. And I don't blame you. If this is a problem, sure. It's not a problem for me or my clients most of the time. We can get away with this much movement. Okay. But at the end of the day, like right now, I'm punched in like three, four hundred percent. So I guess like if you kind of just like pull out and look at it from here, then Ultra NR is a much better choice because it's so much faster and it just like got you there. Not to mention, what if we try to mix temporal threshold with Ultra NR? So let's try that. So if I just go here and I crank that to 22-ish, now I'm getting this kind of result and let's take the motion and crank it back to 20-ish, something like this. And now if we compare this to our traditional NR, so that's our traditional NR, AI-based NR, and I got to say, now the AI based may be a little bit better, but now it's going to come down to the performance. So let's do a playback. And if I do a playback, I'm completely choked. I'm done. On a M2 Ultra maxed out, it's rendering at one frame. Now let's go to our traditional NR, which is right here, and now do a playback. And with that, we're getting about four frames. So not horrible. Now I'm going to create a new version and I'm going to share a plugin that was initially introduced in 2014. So a decade ago, 10 years ago. And the changes that they have made to this plugin over time are just optimization updates, nothing major. The bones of the tool still are the same exact as they were 10 years ago. And let's try to apply that and compare it to results latest and greatest. And of course, I'm talking about neat video. So I'm going to drop that on. And what you do is you click on prepare noise profile. So we're going to click and we're going to go in this little module. And then in here, what you do is you hit auto profile. And as soon as I hit auto profile, it's going to select the area that is the flattest and that can help us remove as much noise as possible. And right now I'm leaving the quality as is. I'm leaving majority of these parameters as is because ultimately the whole idea is that we want to use tools that can just get us 85, 90% of the way there, like with a single click. Then if you have to make modifications, of course. So that's all I'm doing here. Another thing that I did here is under tools, under performance, I went in there and I basically boosted the performance. So I'm using my GPU only, and then here I cranked up these parameters as much as possible. And then I optimized once you go in here and if you hit start, it will optimize this tool based on the hardware that you have. So now that we have this selected, I'm going to hit apply and I come out and now look at this. I mean, come on. So here we have traditional and AI and are working together in tandem, giving us this. Okay. And it's choking and it's crazy. And now we're going to go right here, and this is your neat video NR. And just like, look at how smooth this is. Guys, this is a third-party plugin, a decade old, with some optimizations, and I'm working it like this compared to Resolve's native. And that's one thing to just keep in mind. When people get, like, super stoked, and, like, I see so many comments, people are just like, oh, Resolve just came out with look creation, and... Now, nobody will ever buy DCTLs or some third-party plugins. Like, this is not how it usually works. It's the other way around. Like, third-party plugins and tools and specialty tools will always be decades ahead of, like, an in-app tool that you can use. And you're seeing the results right here. Now, what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to create a node. And in here, I'm just going to do this. I'm going to go under Sharpening or Blur and Sharpen. And I'm going to drop this to about 40. And as soon as I do that, you're like, dude, what the hell did you just do? And then I'm going to do Shift H and turn on AB. And now what we want to do, this is going to help us just grab the edges. Because what I want to do is I want to apply noise reduction and I want to basically undo the noise reduction effect on edges only. So like the eyes, the tip of the nose, all of those areas will stay sharpened. So I'm going to go under scaling and I'm going to start dialing it back and look what's happening. I'm going to dial it back to around four-ish. And now it's only selecting these edges and it's not affecting anything else. So if I hit shift H and if I come out 
And now, if I go really close, like right here, and I do before, applying my sharpening effect and after. So this is an advanced technique to gain back the sharpening that we lost after applying noise reduction. The next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new note and I'm gonna type in grain and let's go open this up again and then just drop our film grain. And guys, look at this. So now we got our monochromatic grain to give our image some weight. And this is with neat. on and off all these nodes, like look at the difference and the weight that we added to our image without losing any sharpening. So if I go here and if I just do before and after, like look at this, like look at this. It just literally took off every single thing and there is like no movement. Like look at this. There is no motion blur, no movement, no ghosting, nothing. All right, let's see the playback. Look at this. I'm getting about 14 frames, 15 frames of playback. I mean, it just blows my mind how good this freaking tool is, how unreal this freaking tool is. Personally, I'm a massive fan of third-party plugins and just specialty tools. No matter how good your in-app plugin is, it's just not gonna compete against that standalone, that thing that is created to do one specific task. And we just saw it in practice. If you found this video helpful, it will mean the world to me, guys. If you smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, share this video with friends so we can grow this community together. If you have any content suggestions, drop them down below. That said, I will see you in the next one. Love, fam.